Well guys, I'm suddenly in the mood to do some more Dragon Ball GT What Ifs. And, um, why not with um, a series that I have indeed completed, and this is What If Gine Survived Dragon Ball GT Edition. So, we've already done the Dragon Ball Super Timeline, so let's see how things would play out in the Dragon Ball GT Timeline. And well, our story begins with Kakarot and Bardock, not Oob, training in the Room of Spirit and Time. Well, why isn't there any Oob? Because the ending of the Boo Saga played out very differently. In fact, Majin Boo wasn't even able to be, wasn't even resurrected in that timeline. There were just too many powerful Saiyans around pretty much to put a stop to it, including Bardock's team, Shugesh, Shugesh, Orgos, Vasha, and Tora. It just meant that it was pretty much, yeah, no contest. The threat was put away early. And, um, well, with Kakarot and Bardock having some quality time in the room of Spirit and Time, and Gine, who's now arrived, prepare preparing for a family, a big giant sp spread for them when they emerge from the Room of Spirit and Time, which they do, but meanwhile, everyone is unaware that the Pilaf gang have made their way to the lookout and have stolen the Black Star Dragon Balls. And well, just like you can imagine, they have, um, summoned the Black Star Eternal Dragon, the Black Star Shenron, if you prefer, and, um, well, as Bardock and Kakarot exit the chamber, um, Bardock and Gine sort of notice the disturbance, while Kakarot is too busy chowing down at this point to notice, and both Gine and Bardock take a walk to, um, find out what this is, and, um, as they run into the Pilaf gang, the Pilaf gang pretty much instantly mistake Bardock for, well, for Kakarot. After all, they are spitting images of each other. Well, minus the scar on Bardock's um, face, that is. Oh, it's that Kakarot brat again! And they instantly attack Kine and Bardock, but are quickly um, put down, and, um... I'm not my son. <laughs> my name is Bardock. Well, I don't care who you are, Mr. Bardock. Oh, I wish you two were just children. I'd easily whelp you and belt you around. And, well, this is where Kakarot joins in. Hey, I know you guys. You're the Pilaf gang. And the next thing we hear is the voice of the red black star Shenron. Your wish has been granted. And Gine and Bardock are shrunk down, de-aged, into, um, a couple of, um, basically eight-year-old children. And, what? Mom and Dad are children? This is, um, Goku with a shock. And, well, Pilaf's plan are instantly foiled, who pretty much take their leave, and the Black Star Dragon Balls scatter across the um, universe, as we know. And, um, well, King Kai went to try and, um, warn everybody the consequences of the Black Star Dragon Balls being scattered, and, well, as it turned out, Dende and Mr. Popo didn't even know about them. And, um, well... Gine, Gine and, um, Bardock decide to basically fly off, and, um, they get, they go somewhere to eat, as it turns out, Gine's own personal restaurant, who, she may not have had a restaurant in this timeline that I mentioned, but she definitely does have her own restaurant now, and her, um, employees are surprised to see her as a child, and taking orders from her as a child, as she, um, and Bardock are having a feed down at the restaurant, 
But D.B. Wright, didn't they just need to look at, well, these are Saiyans we're talking about. We know those Saiyans can eat, and eat a lot. And, well, we could argue that being transformed into a kid would um, probably make you hungry. Anyways, so, meanwhile, while that's going on, as it turns out, there is a, um... Um, I believe someone trying to rob City Hall or something like that, uh, rob a bank, and, um, well, Bardock's and Guinea's great-grandchild, Pan, is smacked down in the middle of it, and, um, well, Goku, who, um, followed after his parents shortly after, well, basically, Bardock and Guinea tried to get involved and, um, interfere in this, but... Ultimately, they were told no by their teenage great-granddaughter, Pan, and, um, well, she easily takes care of the criminals, and, well, this is where she lays eyes on her grandfather the first time since they parted ways seven, seven or odd years ago at the end of, um, Dragon Ball Z. And, um, this is where she learns the shock that her great-grandparents, Bardock and Gine, are now the size of eight-year-olds. And this is where King Kai gives them this warning. Yeah, well, turns out that the Black Star Dragon Balls, um, you have a year to find them before, basically, the planet they were used on gets destroyed. And, well, so now, after all this time, the Earth is in danger, and it's time for another space mission. After all, there haven't really been any more space missions since the events of Planet Namek. And so, <coughs> with that, with Vegeta roping um, trunks into this mess, and um, basically, the team going off to get the Black Star Dragon Balls is Goku, Trunks, Bardock and Gine, and, of course, Pan, who, um, stows away and, um, pre-launches the ship before all the final repairs and building was done to the ship, so the ship's already losing parts. And, well, just like in the original, this causes them to, um, crash land on planet Emeka, which they are dealing with, um, a dictator who overcharges everyone in his populace, which causes everyone else to overcharge everyone, and Bardock and the others are hit with an unexpected bill, bill. Now, this does go very differently than the Dragon Ball GT story we're used to, because of Bardock's, you know, Saiyan temper. And he's like, we're not paying for any of this junk, we did not ask for any of this junk. Get it away from us. He powers up, pretty much eradicating most of that merchandise. Pretty much instantly putting them on the number one most wanted list. And this is before they steal the um, ship. Steal the ship back. And well, within the couple of days they were there, they do meet Giru, the robot who swallows up the Dragon Raider and ultimately is forced to become part of the team, and they, of course, have to steal their ship back from the, um, greedy dictator of the planet, who was, um, saw fit to, um, take it for himself, and, well, they better save it before he decides to scrap it, and basically, that mission goes off just like it does in the original, Except, um, with a bit more of a success, because, you know, you've got, we've got more Saiyans there, so, um, it's not as difficult. And at least Gine knows how to drive the, um, hover truck, so it's not like we've got unlicensed pan driving at this time. Although, I suppose when you think about it, it's also not going very well, considering that Gine is now the size of an eight-year-old child and can barely see over the windshield. So, 
for laughs, Pan does have to take over the driving, who isn't much better. I almost forgot for a second that Gine was, was the size of a child in the story. Bad, D.B. Wright. Bad. Remember your own facts. And, well, essentially, after rescuing the ship and um, realizing that the people of this planet aren't overcharging people because they want to, it's pretty much the only way they're going to survive. You know, even then, there's still a risk of someone coming along and repossessing your house and ripping the roof off of your house. So, Pat... Pan decides, just like in the original, that they have to help these people. And, um, Gine can feel very proud of her, um, great-granddaughter. And Bardock, he's, he's just wanting to hit something, you know, typical Saiyan brute. <laughs> I was afraid we weren't going to be able to kick a little ass on this trip. I'm sorry, I can't do a little kid Bardock voice, so we, we still got an adult Bardock voice. And, um, ah, well, that can just be part of the comedy. And, well, we get, um, basically, the Saiyans giving themselves up, and essentially, just like in the original, Goku gets his fight with, um, Legic, and is ultimately successful in freeing Plant Emeka, and, well, they end up going to the next planet, and, well, much like in the um, original Dragon Ball GT, that goes pretty much exactly like it does in the original. Just, um, you know, you got Bardock and Gine there as well. And so, we then get to um, the events of the story where the Papa brothers steal one of the Dragon Balls from out underneath our team of heroes and pretty much they're in hot pursuit and um Bardock and the gang have to um do battle with um giant worms that are known to eat up and destroy ships meanwhile people like the pa Papa brothers who come from the planet Lude are able to um slip by there, no problem, without being detected, and, um, well, after they find out there was another Dragon Ball on the ship, their, um, cult leader sends them back out there to try and retrieve it, and, um, well, this is where they do their paw paw, brother dance attack, paw paw paw, paw paw paw, and it's kind of funny to think of a, of a Bardock getting swept up in the dancing, which, he does, uncontrollably. This is just cruel and unusual punishment. I am a warrior, not a dancer. But, some way or another, Gine is able to um, fire a key blast and put a stop to the dancing. And ultimately, the Papa brothers are captured. And of course, they're searching their ship for their missing Dragon Ball, which they don't have anymore. And just like in the original, the um, ship automatically locks down and flies away with um, Pan and Giru still inside it. And um, which ultimately leads up to Pan being transformed into a doll. And um, well, at least on the positive side, the Papa brothers are willing to cooperate until the rest of the gang, where, um, Pan has been flown off to, and, um, essentially brings the rest of the heroes there, and, um, we get an all-out fight between Goku and Bardock and Trunks taking on the, um, cult leader, who is pretty much easily defeated, until it is fine revealed that um, this um, Lord Lude is simply a machine that's basically looks like a giant cat and um, the real villain behind this mess is the evil Dr. Mew who's trying to collect the Black Star Dragon Balls in order to take over the universe and um, his lackey who was put in charge of the whole um, Lord Lude 
fiasco um, does indeed wake up, does indeed himself get transformed into a doll for failure, and Pan and him are thrown into Lord Lou, just like in the original, and, um, well, with Gene and Bardock also offering, with, um, assistance to Goku and Trunks, it's just too much for the, um, cat to really handle, but yet, they're still not getting anywhere, and, well, this is when the Papa brothers are able to, um, extract the information from Dr. Mew's lackey and learn how to, um, get out of, um, Lord Lude, and, um, well, it turns out that, um, Goku and Pan have to, um, shoot a key blast at its heart at the exact same time, with the all pepper pot, pickle pot, purple pot. And that is successful, and Lord Lude is finally taken down, and um, their Dragon Balls recovered. And well, now they are on their way flying through the universe until they hit a certain area of space, and Giru seems to be acting weird and points out his home world. Planet M2, and well, they are now set to land on Planet M2, and I think, at least for now in this side of the story, this is where we're going to leave things for right now. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this part? How are things on M2 going to work out that we have Gine and Bardock with the um, original Dragon Ball GT 08 team as well? <laughs> GTOA team. Oh, that was a mouthful. Anyway, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave your thoughts in the comments, and I'll be back next time when we continue this story.